Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu salam ala Rasulillah. This is going to be the last uh, important topic in uh, chapter 6. Okay, this is the last important new topic in chapter 6 in the electrical system. Complex impedance. Okay. So we we're going to learn in this video, we're going to learn oh, what is a complex impedance? What does it mean, complex impedance? Okay, and how to use this uh, method. Okay. All right. Now, the definition of complex impedance for any uh, element, for any passive element in electrical system, okay, the definition of complex impedance is the Laplace transform of the voltage across the uh, element over the Laplace transform over the uh, current through the element. Okay, so complex impedance, Laplace transform of the voltage across the element over the Laplace transform of the current through the element. Okay, so you need to remember it's like a transfer function. Complex impedance is like a transfer function. It's in the S domain. Okay, it's in the S domain. All right, now given uh, this uh, loop, this electrical system, okay, how to find the complex impedance for each element? Okay, so the question is how to find a Z for this inductor? That's called ZL. Well, we're going to use this definition. So ZL will be the Laplace transform of the uh, uh, voltage, the voltage across. What is the voltage across uh, uh, an inductor? L, it's a small L, it's capital L, inductors. L, DI, DT, right? This is the definition of the voltage or the value of the voltage, over the Laplace transform Laplace transform of the current through. What is the current through L? It's I. It's a variable. Okay. So take the Laplace transform. What is the Laplace transform of uh, differential? It's S, right? S I. So it's going to be L S going to be L S capital I over what's the Laplace transform of I in the I in the time domain it's going to be capital I in the S domain right all right so this is like I S I S okay so I will cancel with the I capital I and you're left with what L S so Z for any inductance it's going to be simply what Ls z for any inductance it's the inductance the the uh, constant times the uh, co complex uh, variable s so it doesn't matter what is the your inductor inductor in any loop in any loop in any circuit in any electrical system what is the uh, complex impedance for any inductor it's going to be the inductance the constant times s so this is what you need to remember from now on okay i will show you now how to find the complex impedance and then next, I will show you how useful is this complex impedance, okay? So now we know how to find ZL. This is what you need to remember, okay? You don't have to derive it. This is just for understanding. This is just for understanding. You don't have to derive it. What about R? Same thing for R. Z for R, it's going to be Laplace transform Ri, the voltage across, over the current through Laplace transform of I, so it's going to be how much? Ri over I. They will cancel with each other, and it's going to be R. Okay, this error count all the time. It's a PowerPoint problem. And this is what? ZR. So the complex impedance for any resistor, it's going to be simply what? The resistance, the constant. That's all. One more element, and we will be done. The, cap the uh, uh, capacitor. What is uh, Z of any capacitor? It's going to be the Laplace transform of uh, 1 over C integral I dt over uh, Laplace transform of I. This will give you um, how much? This is going to be uh, 1 over Cs. I, 1 over Cs, I, 
over I. I will cancel with I. And from here, Z, C will be 1 over C, S. And this is what you need to remember, okay? You don't have to derive it, okay? Just need to remember how much. So it doesn't matter. For any, complex, for any capacitor in any loop, simply the complex impedance will be 1 over C, S. This is the uh, conclusion. This is what you need to remember, okay? So you need to remember this one, this one, and this one. Alas? All right. Okay. Now, how useful is this complex impedance? I will tell you in the next slide how useful is the complex impedance. I will give you an example. Given a multi-loop problem, okay? This is your input, EI. And then we have a resistor here, for example. And then we have another resistor. See, this PowerPoint has an issue. Uh, okay. Uh, so this is the first loop. Okay, we have a resistor here. And we have a inductor here. And we have a capacitor in the last loop. Okay. It's okay. Okay. Okay, and this is my output. The voltage here is my output. Okay. So we have resistor number one, resistor number two. We have inductor L, we have capacitor C, okay? Now if I ask you, this is my input, this is my output, and I ask you find the transfer function. E out over EI. So how are you gonna do this? Okay, how are you gonna do this? In the uh, uh, previous section of the chapter, what we did, we have to define uh, I1 in here, and then in the second loop, I2, and then in the third loop, I3. Then you will have uh, one equation of motion here, another equation for loop number two, another equation for loop number three, and then you need to define uh, what is the output, E out, which is the voltage across C. Okay, then how many equations you will have? One, two, three, four equations. So you will have four equations with five variables, and you need to solve, and it's going to be longer than the example that we solved in the past video. Okay. Is there an easier way to do this without going through all this headache to find the transfer function? The answer is yes. How? Complex impedance. I will show you step by step how to do this. And then you will be ready to solve any problem. Sorry. You need to define. In complex impedance, it's much easier, especially if you have multi-loops like this one. Okay. In complex impedance, you need to define, uh, first find the complex the impedance for each element. Okay. All right. So this is, uh, I'll do it step by step. Maybe I should use another color. Okay, maybe it's better to use another color. Let me use a uh, blue. So this is, uh, I'll call it ZR1. This is ZR2. This is ZL. This is ZC. Okay. All right. First of all, uh, you need to define what is ZR1. Step number one, ZR2 and ZL, you need to find them, and ZC. Okay, ZR1 is going to be simply R1. This is R2. This is LS. This is 1 over CS. خلاص? Okay, these are the definitions that we just found. Okay, all right. Step number one. You got it. These are numbers with the complex uh, function or complex variable S. Okay. So this is step number one. Step number two, you need to uh, use the... This is what? ZR1.
you need to find the equivalent. What is the equivalent of all these complex impedances in a parallel? Is there a equivalent? Yes. It's like a, a, if you have resistors in parallel. Okay, same thing. Same thing. Okay. It is the same thing. So I'm going to use uh, orange or maybe another color different from red. Let me use uh, something dark. Dark is better. Okay. So you need to find the equivalent of all these complex impedances. Okay, and you will call it Z, let's call it equivalent. Okay, so this loop will be uh, more simple, like one loop only. This multi-loop will become only just one loop, similar to this one. So this is Z equivalent. Okay. Remember, it's going to be in the S domain, so this is going to be capital EI in the S domain. And this will be the same output E out. Okay? And I'm going to define a current here. I'm going to call it capital I S. Okay? We have only one loop. See how we come from this complicated loop to this simple loop. Now, the question, how to find this Z equivalent? Z equivalent, in, in, uh, in short... Uh, one over z equivalent. If they are in parallel, if they are in parallel, one over z equivalent will be equal to one over uh, z r one plus one over uh, z l plus uh, one over uh, z c. Okay, one over z equivalent. If they are in parallel, if you have uh, complex impedances in parallel. It will be 1 over Z equivalent equal to 1 over Z, uh, R2, ZL, 1 over C, and so on. How do I know this? From this uh, uh, transformation. You see, if you have, if you have, uh, if you want to find uh, from this loop, see, after taking Laplace transform and the complex impedance, okay, you see if they are in, in, uh, in series, okay, uh, it's a matter of addition. You see the equation of motion, how they come? It's a matter EI over I will become the addition of all these complex impedance. Same thing, you can prove it if they are in parallel. And they, if they are in parallel, uh, 1 over Z equivalent will be over 1 over Z1 plus 1 over Z2 and so on. Okay, you don't have to prove it. Okay, don't worry, it's already proven. Okay, so if you have uh, complex impedance in series, the equivalent will be what? Okay, Z equivalent. This is Z equivalent. If they are in series, Z equivalent will be this one, addition. If they are in parallel, like in this example, 1 over Z equivalent will be 1 over ZR1 plus 1 over ZL plus 1 over ZC, and so on. Okay? So all you have to do, just it's a matter of math, simple calculations. Okay. This is going to be ZR1. Z L Z C and this one will become uh, um, Z L Z Z, um, Z L uh, Z C plus uh, Z R one Z C plus uh, Z R one Z L. All right. So Z equivalent will be how much? Z R one. So Z R two or Z R one. Sorry, this is Z R one, right? Z R. Sorry, two, two, not one. I apologize. Two. Two and two, because one is here, not in the equivalent, okay? I hope we did not make this mistake anywhere else. Okay, that's okay. So this is ZR2, okay? ZR2. ZR2, ZR2. 
So this is going to be ZR2, ZL, ZC, over, over what? ZL, ZC. Plus uh, Z R two Z what C plus Z R one uh, Z R two Z L Z L Okay. Now this is a transfer function you have. Okay, ready already calculated from here from these values. Now, how are you going to find the uh, transfer function? E out, E out will be simply what? It will be simply what from here? E out. What is E out? E out is what? E out is the, isn't it the uh, Z equivalent times the current I? Because what's the definition of Z equivalent or Z? Definition of Z is what? The transform voltage over the transform current, right? So if you multiply by the current, it will give you the voltage, right? It will give you the voltage. Where are we? So this is the, if you multiply the Z equivalent times I, it will give you the voltage E out, which is here, right? Over, over what? Over Z R1 plus, because what's the equivalent of these two? What is EI? EI is the equivalent of Z R1 plus Z equivalent times the same current I. Let me rewrite it again here. The transfer function we're looking for E out E out over E I will be Z equivalent times I the current because we have one loop over Z R1 plus Z equivalent equivalent times I. So I will cancel with the current, okay? And the transfer function we're looking for is ready now. Z equivalent over Z R1 plus Z equivalent. All you have to do, just simplify the terms, and then you will get a nice transfer function similar to the transfer function that we got before. So that's all, okay? This is how we use complex impedance, okay? It's very useful when we have a multi-loop like this one, much easier than, uh, it's a matter, you see, you can solve it in one page instead of uh, many pages if you want to solve with the multi-loops, equation of motion, and substitution method. It's going to be much longer. So complex impedance sometimes is very useful. And this is the last topic that's really new and important in Chapter 6. All right, thank you very much.